Hey, we're glad you joined us tonight. I'm Pastor Benny. Welcome to Nightline. And you know what? As you're tuning in tonight or tomorrow, whenever it might be that you're uh, seeing the program, you're going to want to say something like, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. That's right. And now, I know we just got past Labor Day, but listen, if Walmart can put Christmas trees out before Labor Day, we can sing it's starting to look a lot like Christmas here at Channel 16 because every day for born-again believers, Christi Christmas, but listen to me, today, tonight's guest, I'm here to tell you, we, it's going to be fabulous. It's one of the programs that I always look forward to hosting. It's one of the programs that I get all excited about. We're here tonight about Operation Christmas Child. All right. Now, you know what that is, shoeboxes, Samaritan's Purse, all around the world. We're going to make an impact through that great organization that Franklin Graham leads. You can be part of that. We're going to be, you, you can find out maybe you have never even packed a shoebox before. We're going to tell you how to do that. You're going to meet these ladies uh, who are doing that. Let me tell you some of our guests tonight. Kathy Huffman's back with us. Uh, she is the upstate area coordinator. She's been with us. We've been together now so many, many years. Also, Patricia DeHardins is with us. Vladimir, uh, he'll pronounce his last name. Do you want to say that for me, Madam Director? I mean, you're so... Prokhnevsky. Uh, and a Russian name, and uh, thank you. Uh, he's going to be sharing about, he was a recipient of one of those boxes years ago. Judy Edwards is here, Operation Christmas Child from the Upstate Prayer Team. Uh, Colleen Mooney is here, uh, Christmas Child volunteer, and Denise Brooks is here, coordinator uh, from a local church. Uh, it happens to be Appalachian Baptist Church where I'm serving. She's going to be here at the, toward the end of the program talking about her role, and I'm telling you right now, you need to get someone who's excited about Jesus, who's excited about changing the world through shoeboxes and uh, Dr. Graham's organization. I am just thrilled. And by the way, yes, Tapestry is with us tonight. I get thrilled to know that when we do these programs, they're always, this is the second, third, fourth year, we've, we've had a lot of fun, and uh, we're going to continue having fun over and over again. So listen to me. Tonight, prayer partners are standing by. Do you see that number right there at the, at the bottom of your screen? That's right, 864 Two four four one six one six. You call that number. Prayer partners are standing by. They are ready for your call. They are ready to receive your call. But they can't pray. They can't praise. They can't shout glory, victory in Jesus if you don't call. So go to those telephones. We want to hear from you. Right now, Tapestry Praise Team is going to send Friend of God. Come on, folks. Let's sing it.
call you friend tonight. Serve him and love him because he deserves it. And be a friend of God. Now, you have to understand something. I'm getting, I'm, I, listen, if, if, if they kept singing another minute, there'd have been a hole in the ceiling. This old Baptist would become Pentecostal assembly, and I would, boom, I'd have been gone tonight. That's one of my, thank you, Paul. Uh, their leader is, is Paul White and the great folks, and we enjoy their music. A lot of programming tonight. You see this, don't you? I am a proud, uh, listen, I believe 150,000% and Operation Christmas Child, and I want you to meet with me tonight. If you don't know her, Kathy Huffman. Kathy, we're so glad you're here. Welcome. And then beside you is Patricia Deshardeen. Yes. Am I saying that correctly? We were you, we were here last year, yes, we were. and so you're going to see some familiar faces. Welcome back. Time flies, doesn't it? It does. Oh my yeah. goodness! I mean, to think. I mean, we gotten started uh, way back at Appalach Church back in June. We started preparing our folks. And so talk to us about the mission of Operation Christmas Child. Well, for people who don't understand, Operation Christmas Child is a ministry of Samaritan's Purse, which is a Franklin Graham ministry. And uh, they have many pieces to the ministry, and Operation Christmas Child is an international mm -hmm. outreach to evangelize mm -hmm. the world. Yes. And last year we did how many shoe boxes, Patricia? 10.6 million gospel opportunities. Wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time, Patricia. Say it again. 10.6 million gospel opportunities. And you're part of that. Anyone who backs a shoe box Absolutely. is part of that. I mean, how can that not light? If that doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. I mean, really, <laughs> it, it re really is. I mean, well, that's true. If you uh, do a shoe box, it, cost you $20 to do a shoebox right. and just think that if someday in heaven someone may come up to you and say thank you for <laughs> thank packing you. that shoebox. My, my. I mean, can, well, I know we have for a guest tonight. Vladimir yeah. will be here talking about yes. when he received one. But now, uh, how long has this ministry been involved? In? And uh, I know uh, we, we're all familiar with the Graham organization, the Graham name, mm -hmm. but how long particularly has this ministry, shoebox, has been going? Well, uh, it started in 1993, mm -hmm. and they had about 20,000 shoeboxes that first year, and now we're up to 10.5 million. Whoa. And this year, the goal is 
the goal is um, 11 million. Okay. 11 million. Because of my church. Last year, Denise, help me, we did 430, 450 last year. Uh, Okay, about 400 some. Our, our, our coordinator from our church is here. This year, she set a goal for 700, almost double, not quite, in our local church. Mm -hmm. So I, hopefully we can surpass 11 million yes. easily. Yes, and that would be so wonderful. Every shoebox reaches, they estimate, nine people with the gospel. Oh my. So just think of, I mean, if you're good at math, oh. which I'm not, but that's a lot of people, <laughs> isn't it? Don't ask me to count, please. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. All right, how many countries are going to receive these shoeboxes? Last year it was 112 countries, and that included 24 what we call hard-to-reach uh -huh. countries. Right, right. That we can't say the names of those but for security reasons. Right. But Yes. So we're looking at maybe 124 countries. 112 total. 112 total. 24 of the 112 are hard to reach. Okay, countries. and but they're still going to get them in there again this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And of course, the more shoe boxes they have, the more recipients, the more the gospel is penetrated right. into yes. these darkened countries. That's yes. right. And and sometimes people don't realize they don't realize. Oh, a shoe box you can get. You can just take it anywhere. No, you can't. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you cannot. All right, what comes out of a shoebox? I mean, people are always wanting to know what, what comes out of it or what goes into it. Help me. Which, who, what goes in and what goes out? Help me. Well, the, uh, lots of toys and, and uh, items like toothbrushes and combs and things like that because children don't, in this country, we don't realize that people live without those things in other countries. These kids may never have another gift in their life. This may be the only one that they get. Right. And so we have just uh, some examples here, but um, this is one of my favorites, is putting a stuffed toy in a shoebox. Oh, my. Because other children, children in other countries don't get stuffed toys. They don't have anything to hug at night and, like our kids do. And you see... We, we in this country uh, of video games and all that other uh, evil that they get, I mean, this might not appear a whole lot to people in, the, in America, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But around the world in third and fourth world countries, boy, this is precious. I know. It absolutely is. Oh, this my. is one of the most important things you can put in a shoebox. Yeah. What, what but, else do we have in there? Well, what? I do want to point this out please. real quickly. Yes. Uh -huh, this please. is uh, the gospel booklet that goes with every shoebox. So when the child receives his shoebox, mm -hmm. this gospel booklet in the child's language, and I think it's translated into over 150 languages. Now, can you imagine? And they'll get that gospel booklet it'll be right on top of their shoebox when it's handed to them. That's what they'll see the moment they open that shoebox. And you see it says the greatest gift. The greatest because gift. Because Jesus is the greatest <laughs> gift, right? And not, not so much the shoebox, but this gets us into uh, places where they don't even have. What else is in there? What else uh, would we have? Uh, Patricia, tell us. I mean, you can start taking that close. Can we get a close-up of this, fellas or gals? Uh, because this is... People are always saying, well, Pastor, what do we put in the shoebox? Well, one thing that we always love to put in, in the shoebox are school supplies. And so paper. Paper, um, okay. just like our students here would like. Right. Uh, in this particular shoebox, there's more toys. And so in this case, there's a little pom-pom, and the, ki look, the kids love those. Isn't that something? Those of you at home, pay attention because so many of you are ask over and over. Here's some ideas for you. Always do um, hygiene supplies because a lot of kids may not have their own toothbrush. Uh -huh. So we like to do that. Okay. And then obviously there's a bar of soap in here as well as a washcloth, another hygiene item. Um, we can do scissors. We scissors, can. scissors are um, approved to do in shoe boxes because that's a school supply. And then of course more toys. Mm. And some people like to put clothing in shoe boxes. Wow. And what the, what the miracle is of the shoebox is some, some people say, well, I don't know what size clothing to put, but God works that out. Yes, he does. And it's amazing how we see photographs and videos of children receiving clothing, and they'll say, it was the perfect size. The child put mm -hmm. the clothing or the yeah. shoes. There's shoes in this box. Look at that. that, that and it was, and it, was per, it fit the child perfectly. It's such a blessing. And look how much stuff we can get in one shoe oh, yes. box. And there's, and there's way more in this box. Yeah, and, and keep on. I want the, okay. uh, we're getting, can we get a picture of this? Uh, uh, sure. And I want them to M see. More what, uh, hygiene products, pencils. 
Here's a, a rubber balloon that's uh, in the shape of a globe. Wow. I'm sure when it's inflated, it will uh -huh. be the, the Earth. Um, sunglasses. That's a need, trust me, in some of these hot countries. This Ooh. is a little girl's headband. A little car. Always wow. a ball. Kids can always mm -hmm. use a ball because they can play with other children yeah. as well as themselves. Yeah, yeah. Here's, a, here's another car. An eraser for Look school supplies. This. Look at all this. It's the endless shoebox. Here's some uh, playing cards. My gracious. Old maid. Little. I, <laughs> let, oh, oh, I love it. Mm. Go ahead. Little girls love jewelry and bracelets. Look at this. Look and at if, this. A, if a boy were to receive this box, he might have a sister. Right, or, or a girlfriend. Or a girlfriend, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but uh, he'll be. No, this is. Sharpener for the pencils. Look at this, folks. Are, are you paying attention? Look at what we're unloading out of this shoe box. Go ahead, yeah, uh, Patricia. Paints. My. My. And here are some more balloons, because kids like to blow up balloons. They do, mm -hmm. they do. Yes. So, with, with all that being said, I mean, all of this coming together, over 10 million of these boxes that you've seen were mm -hmm. given out last That's year. Right. The goal this year is to get 11 million plus one. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, we we can do that. That's right. That's and and right. so, uh, what's been the greatest joy uh, that you've had, Miss Huffman? The greatest joy of it all? Well, I just I think just the idea that that the gospel is going through these shoe boxes that we get to bring uh, this piece of joy to the children, mm -hmm. but it opens up the door yes. uh, to the gospel in places where there are no churches. And they'll take, evangelists will take these into villages where they, there's no Christian witness at all. And mm -hmm. they'll be allowed in because uh, of this gift that the children are gonna get. Mm -hmm. And churches have started in many places yes. because of a shoebox distribution. Patricia, question, what do I do after I pack my shoebox? What, do, what does the person do? Well, um, they have a couple of different options. Um, you can take your shoebox to a drop-off location. Right. And those are available online on right. SamaritansPurse.org. And, and also we have them here at the yes. station. If you'd like to call, we can direct you here. Yes, we can. Uh -huh. So um, they can drop them off at a, at a shoebox uh, collection site. But there are some community groups that also collect shoeboxes. Yes. For mm -hmm. example, we do have some Chick-fil-A's that might be participating. Right. And right. that would be um, different... Uh, stores have different rules on that, but obviously that that's an option. And then um, there's stores like Hobby Lobby, for right. example, that right. also right. collect shoe boxes. One last question: How can I volunteer? Someone's listening tonight. One of you. Kathy. Well, yes. Well, we're always glad to have more volunteers, and so we're going to have. Uh, Colleen is going to come on later yes. and explain all about the volunteers yes. and we have a team and we've been together many of us have been together for t uh, 10 years and doing this with Operation Christmas Child and we're all volunteers and if you want to volunteer Amen. and make a real difference for the kingdom Amen. then this is the place for you and we'd love to talk to people who are interested. You know, for me, as I said, I was telling my wife before I came tonight, I said, that it really is one of my favorite programs because I get to be with you folks. We've, we've been together a while. But also, we have such, uh, we have such a, a live wire in our church at Appalachia, Denise, who's constantly pushing, pushing, that uh, I think that's a key. You've got to be excited. Pulpit's got to yes. be excited about it. Yes, And that's right. we are at Appalachia. Thank you, ladies. I know we've got a lot of our folks coming up. Thank you all again for being with us. I hope it won't be until next year I see you. But if it is, I'll see you then. But uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you for great. the great work. Thank you, Pastor oh Benny. You're always great. Y'all are you. fabulous. Yeah. Love you both. Thank you. Thank you. Right now, Tapestry Praise Team is going to sing Heart of Worship. Okay, folks, lead us now.
I want to know, do y'all have a CD yet? <laughs> Paul, you have a CD? Yes, sir. When are you going to get it? When the Lord allows. <laughs> Lord! <laughs> Lord! <laughs> I mean, they, they're, they're too good not to have a CD. We'll be anxious to get that, and we'll plug it real big if you'll autograph a copy for me. I just want you to know. 
Hey, tonight it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and yes, it is. We've been hearing from Operation Christmas Child. Right now, I want to you to meet Vladimir Prokhnevsky. Vladimir, sir. you said it better than I could. Well, well, thank you. I've been practicing for three months now, <laughs> and uh, thank you for being here. Hey, thank you for um, me. Uh, this young man many years ago was a recipient of a, an Operation Christmas Child box. But tell us a little bit about yourself, Vladimir. That's you right. Well, I come from a family of nine kids. So my father was an underground minister in Kiev, Ukraine. He risked his life preaching the gospel in the streets of Kiev during communism. And so because my father was a believer, he was hindered from advancing the society. So he had to settle for low-paying jobs. And that resulted in not having much money to work with. So we had to take turns to go outside to play because we only had so many pairs of shoes. We had to share toothbrushes growing up. It's a humbling experience. As for toys, we had to get very creative. We made yo-yos out of Coca-Cola caps. It was kind of cool. We would make, would flip the caps, put a little hole through it, put a little match, some string, make yo-yos. And we'd also play with our shoes, pretending they were cars. Some days they were airplanes, some days they were boats. And, uh, and we also would find pieces of paper, we'd draw little roads on them, cut out cars, and we'd drive. It was like Google Map bird's eye view. It's pretty Whoa. sweet. <laughs> yeah, and as for the food, we pretty much grew up on rice and potatoes, which I often jokingly say that I guess we were vegetarians and didn't even know it. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and we grew up in a tiny three-bedroom apartment, 11 of us, uh, no he barely any heating and cooling. And my mom, we didn't have a washer and dryer, so my mom, she had to do all the laundry by hand. And because of the amount of laundry that my mom had to do, her hands would often crack and bleed, and mom would stay up and she would make socks and underwear for us out of old clothes or donated material. But you know what? In the middle of all that, that's when we were invited to come to a Christmas celebration. And I was so excited because they told us that we'll get a gift. And I never had a gift before. I was nine years old. This was in the middle of cold Ukrainian winter. And when it's it, cold up Oh, there. it is cold, yes. Snow up to here. Our socks were soaked. We were lightly dressed, but it didn't matter because I was so excited to finally get to this location. Mm. And get this, when I pulled up to this location, I was walking in at the same time with this girl who I recognized from a class. And I knew for a fact that this girl was not a believer. And I thought that this was Christmas celebration only for Christians, but I was way wrong. Mm -hmm. This place was filled with all kinds of people from all walks of life. And when we enter this place, it's like we transition from this black and white Ukrainian winter to a warm room of color and laughter. And there was so much singing, beautiful, welcoming American smiles. And But most importantly, they presented the gospel to us in so many different and unique ways through singing, dancing, cartoons, movies, animations, flannel boards. That yes. was the first time I saw those things. Yeah. It's so cool. And, you know, if they stopped at that, it would have been enough. And if by the end of the evening, if you didn't understand what the gospel was all about, you weren't paying attention because they went above and beyond. And that's when they brought out these beautiful and colorful shoe boxes. And when, when I opened my shoe box, Pastor Vanny, it's like everything that I imagined playing with growing up, it's like it manifested in real life. Wow. I had my own yo-yo. I didn't have to make yo-yos or cook cola caps anymore. I had my own toothbrush. I had wow. to share one. I had my own hot wheel car. I didn't have to play with my shoes anymore. And I had a bar of soap, which is like the whitest white I've ever seen. It was so smooth around in the red edges. And it had a print of the dove. It's like the Holy Spirit in a box. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah, I understand. And, this, and I had this thing right here that I didn't know what it was. And I licked it thinking, it was dental floss, but I licked it thinking it was candy. And I remember thinking, <laughs> you Americans have some interesting candy. Like, what is this? I thought perhaps maybe it was some diet candy or something like that. My mouth was all numb from all of it. And then there was a gentleman there who tried to explain the best way he knew how, what it was really for. He went like this. He's, so what I got out of it is that you're supposed to brush your teeth with it, which confused <laughs> me even more. I remember thinking, how is this effective, right? I mean, toothbrush, I get it. That's pretty effective. But witnessing beautiful, perfect American smiles that evening, I thought, well, clearly they have it figured out. Maybe it's some kind of technology that hasn't reached uh, wow. my country yet. But, you know, most importantly, over the years, I forgot a, a, a lot of details, but I never forgot how it made me feel. And in our culture, when somebody gives you a box, they always expect something in return, but here's a gift that was given to me with no strings attached unconditionally, and that changes lives. Now, I always say that God is love, and when you show love to people, you show God to people. When people experience love, they experience God, and once you experience God's unconditional love, you will not walk away and change. Were you the only one in the family to receive a box? All of us. All, all of us. It was like, it, you know, these boxes, they're not just answered prayers to children, but also to the parents, because my parents were there witnessing us opening up. Because it has a huge ripple effect. You know, I always say, I have two kids. I have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. I always say that if you want to show love to me, show love to my children. Right. And that's exactly, right. it has a ripple effect that you wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So that, you had nine boxes. Nine boxes. Nine, and that had to have been 
exciting. It was like time <laughs> stopped for a moment and we were just kids. We forgot about our problems, all the things that we had to endure. But for a moment, it's just like time stopped. Remember, we were on the couch when we got home and we're just trading toys. And my sister got a Barbie doll and she was oh, super my. excited. There was only one girl in the neighborhood who had a Barbie and she wasn't allowed to take it outside. So she would like, it was like a scene from Romeo and Juliet. She was on the balcony <laughs> showing all the little girls. <laughs> and when my sister got a Barbie doll, she arranged sleepovers for all the little girls in the neighborhood with this Barbie doll. Uh -huh. And in fact, to this day, we tracked to see where this Barbie went. We gave it to another family when we moved to the United States in 2000. And to this day, 20 years later, this Barbie is still blessing somebody somewhere. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. It goes further than you think. And, and you know, and the fact of the matter is that you were nine. Here you are a little over in your early, early 30s. And it was this shoebox that really changed your life. Of course, uh, coming up in a Christian family. But it changed your life. And here you are some uh, 23 uh, years later talking about a shoebox that changed your mm -hmm. life. And, and you know, uh, folks who are listening tonight, it will change lives. I mean, Vladimir is, is proof positive of that. And, uh, and it might be your box that you pack and that you give to your church or the boxes that you pack that can change not just someone's life like Vladimir, but an entire family. And so, uh, are your parents still living today? Yes, my parents are still alive today. You know that saying, preach the gospel, and if you have to use words, that's how I describe my parents. They live up in Columbus, Ohio, where it's so flat you can watch your dog run away for three days. <laughs> that's where they live. <laughs> Maybe even four if the cornfields yeah. are not in the way. But they're yeah. just amazing people. You know, they l went through so much in life. And uh, every time I call, it's, there's a lot of stories that they share. Oh, just yeah. amazing stories you wouldn't believe. It's amazing when the church is persecuted, that's when beautiful things happen because Absolutely. they have to surrender 100% to God. And, and my father shared so many stories. He should write a book one day. Yeah, he should. So no, many stories. He, he really should. I was in Romania right after Ceausescu was, mm. was assassinated in Helena. Oh, wow. And yeah, and we were just there six months after that uh, in, in 89. And I'm telling you, you know, uh, that was eye opening for me, for, for me to experience. And, I, and, and, I, and I'm listening to all, uh, all of this. And so, what. Uh, what was in that shoebox? You said that, may I, may I hold this just a moment? Yeah, it's just uh, dental floss, right? <laughs> it's the most memorable thing that I remember. They can, can, can we get a close-up of this? I, I want our folks at home to see that there is no gift that is not important. Now, you see that? That says Oral-B. I'm not trying to make a commercial. <laughs> but it is dental floss, and here's Vladimir telling us that, uh, well, it changed his life. So... Uh, it doesn't matter what you might put in the shoebox and you think, well, gracious, this is nothing. It could be to a child in Rwanda or, or Nigeria or, or, or Colombia. I, I don't know, but, you know, I, I have seen uh, in, in the mission field, I've seen, I've met many a child uh, in the islands and over in, in Europe uh, who have been, and in Latin America, who've been recipients of these things. Mm. And, and you, it's, you know, it's amazing. You go into their homes and uh, you see a box in, in their room or in the oh, corner, wow. and you think, oh, wow, did you get this? Oh, no, we got that 10 years ago. So they keep, still keep the box? Yeah, they still keep well, it. It really is a gift if you think about it, so, especially the new boxes. It, it's yeah. a gift of itself. You it, can it, store it, things it in is, it. And, 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 well, all right, let me ask you this. Uh, when you said it represented to you unconditional love, mm. Um, and you were taking the things out of the box. I mean, were you sensing? Uh, what were you sensing? What, well, I'll tell, I tell like? you one thing. This is, you know, my mom, she, she's an amazing cook. She cooks. And you know there's this secret ingredient called love, right? Yes. It doesn't matter how many times I try yes. to recreate her, her recipes. It's just never the same because I'm missing that ingredient. Well, same thing with these boxes. When you pray over these boxes, especially when you pack these boxes with so much love and compassion, and when you pray over these boxes, they change frequencies. They become like boxes full of love, boxes yeah. full of Jesus. And on the receiving end, by just touching that box, right. you feel the love because it's packed with so much quality. I remember to this day, all the details, even like to this day when I walk by the toy aisle and this, the wrapping paper, if I hear all this, it just brings back these memories. There's, when I open, there's just so much color going at once and you just yeah. feel all these emotions that you've never felt before. Colors yeah. you've, you haven't seen, because in my country, everything is very yeah. gray, but there's so much color just yeah. pops out and the smells from the soap 
yeah. it was just there's a lot of emotions that you, it takes you a while to process. You know, there are a lot of folks who are saying, well, Russia has has uh, gotten so advanced these days, but there's still a great need. Oh in, yeah, in and Russia. love, love to unconditional. See these gifts in my country when somebody gives you a gift they always expect something in return right. but here's a gift that was given no strings attached right. it's that's what's so amazing because to especially to the kids from that part of the world it's they can't even process that why would somebody give me a gift with no, no strings attached it, it does something to a young child yeah unconditional love is contagious and it spreads like wildfire yeah, yeah. and you can't fight love and win and so now you're teaching your kids about packing shoe right. boxes yeah it's like a bit it's a family tradition now we pack boxes together i want to see my kids just like my parents that walked it out and i want to show by example right. and i always included i always pack for somebody my own age and mm -hmm. i always include a picture of my family because you never know some of these kids that don't have a family That's and right. so they'll adopt you they'll, they'll be thinking hmm somebody gave me a, a gift with no strings attached and there's a picture of a family this must be my family yeah. I I have a family right. and right. I'll write a message on the back I always say that you know when I was nine years old I received one of these boxes just like you and we, we lived in darkness we were, we were hopeless and helpless but God and I share my testimony mm. and I always encourage them by saying that hey in life it's not about how you start your race it's how you finish your race right. so finish right. strong that's right. my that's my little story that right. I put in the box along it. with everything else that I pray over this box and you know that's an idea for many of you who are thinking about packing one or more shoe boxes. What about some family photos or a picture of yourself or the family? Put it in there. Write a little note on the back. We love you. We're praying for you. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas. Something simple as that goes, goes so far. It goes such a long way. And so you are here, and are you having opportunity to, to share your message in churches? And That's and, right. I do. I love it. And, you know, I meet so many volunteers. It brings me to my tears just to, yeah. So many people make things from scratch. There's so much love that goes into these boxes. And the more I learn about how these boxes go to the most unreached parts of the world, how intentional it is, and the children of the next generation, you know, the future of this world. Right. And what a great opportunity to bless the children. Uh, and it's just, there's so many positives around <laughs> it. That I, I, every time I go to like a Connect conference and I hear all the testimonies and everything that volunteers, because People usually want to hear my story, but I want to hear their story. Sure. I want to hear why what, why are they doing this with no strings attached? What's moving their hearts so much so that they're willing to put in their time, mm -hmm. their money, everything to do mm -hmm. this? And that moves my heart. Generosity is oh, contagious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, for me, it's every year you, you saw uh, Kathy and Patricia up here, volunteers who are giving of their time. And, I mean, this, this thing, uh, it, it, for example, in our church, Miss Denise Brooks starts way back in, in May, June, getting our folks ready for this and uh, people you're not thinking Christmas the end of May 1st of June <laughs> right. but before you know it here we are in September it moves I mean, fast it, I mean time, time it doesn't wait on anybody and so if you had one word to say about someone who's who's thinking about mm -hmm. packing a shoebox and the piece is right there. Look yeah. at that camera. Take a minute, look at that camera, <laughs> and tell that person who's listening tonight, never packed a shoebox, mm -hmm. who's thinking about it, why they ought to go ahead and pack it. Well, a first of all, you know, like we covered a lot of things, but I think just take a box, make it a family tradition, but pack everything that you've always wanted to get when you were a certain age, whenever age you, whichever age you pick. And But most importantly, pray over these boxes because these boxes are like seeds. But again, it's like by just touching it, that seed will go in their, in their heart and somebody will come around and water it. It may not be instant, maybe years from now, somebody else will come around and water that. But it's really, it's not a box, it's a child. And, and I don't look at boxes the same. Once a, once a you know, I, I see a child in this box and that's, that's what moves my heart. I couldn't say it like that, folks. And I hope you've been challenged. Vladimir, thank you, my brother. Thank you thank so much. You for so me. much. You thank have you, been a blessing. And remember this: remember, dental. even something as simple as dental floss can change the life of a child. Right now, tapestry praise team. Oh, the blood! Come on, folks, lead us now. Oh, the 
Oh, the blood. Thank you, uh, Tapestry. Boy, they'll be back uh, on the other side after a hard break. And they're blessing our heart. Remember, prayer partners are standing by. We have several who've called in with requests, praise, or concerns. Let us hear from you, please. We didn't come just to sit here. They came to answer those phones, so keep them busy. You see that number down there, don't you? 864-244-1616. Give them a call and just let them know your heart tonight. We've been talking about it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Don't you agree with me on that, Judy? I sure do. In fact, I got to see Christmas in June. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, J uh, Judy Edwards is with us. She's from Operation Christmas Child Upstate Prayer Team. Judy got to see it. Tell us how you got to see it in June. I was invited to go to a vision trip to South Africa. My. There were 42 of us from the Super South. That is everywhere from Puerto Rico to Kentucky, from the East Coast all the way to Arkansas. Whoa. We traveled. We were in, st in country for five days. Okay. We got to see five distributions and one graduation from the greatest journey. Whoa. Now I want to tell you, if you want Whoa. to build a house, 
you use a tool like saws and hammers and nails, if you want to spread the gospel, mm -mm. a powerful tool is this shoebox. Wow, are you listening? This shoebox comes not only with the love that the people that packed it send, uh -huh. but it also comes with the love of Christ. Mm. Before the boxes are distributed, the children are told the whole gospel story. There are beautiful pictures and there is a script that each teacher mm -hmm. tells in the same way. Mm -hmm. I brought some pictures okay. and the very first one shows what one of those presentations looks like. Okay, can we see that? We've got them coming up and there you go. There are large pictures that tell all about the creation, about how sin entered the world, mm -hmm. how we need a Savior, how Jesus came to be that Savior, all about Jesus' life, His crucifixion, and His resurrection, and then how we can follow Him as Christians. Now this is in South Africa. Yes. Okay. This was at a school for disabled children. Mm -hmm. And so the gospel is presented, and then the children are asked, who would like to be a friend of Jesus? And so many of them are so excited, they've never heard of Jesus before. And so they all raised their hands <laughs> and they got all excited. Then they are invited to participate in something called The Greatest Journey. Oh my. The Greatest Journey is a 12-week study that reiterates everything from creation all the way to Jesus coming to rescue us from our sins mm -hmm. and how we can follow Him as mm -hmm. Christians. Mm -hmm. After the 12-week course, the children graduate. Mm -hmm. And I brought a picture of one of the graduation ceremonies. You've got that, I think, coming up there, did the children actually wear caps and gowns. In this group, the children, and there were 24 of them, they ranged in age from five to 14. They had memorized Bible um, scriptures. They had memorized the, this whole story of the Bible. They did a presentation where children walked across the stage in biblical costumes Whoa. as they told everything from Genesis to Revelation. Whoa. These Whoa. children understand what they now believe. Wow, mercy. So that was incredible. <laughs> I bet. And, and so you were able to be part of that. Yes. And what did that do to you? Is, uh, I mean, I know it changed it your was, life, but... It did. It was an incredible journey. Um, I went over expecting our team, the 42 of us, mm -hmm. to be united. Sure. I wasn't prepared for the love that we felt from the people over yeah. there. Every time we stepped off the bus, we were enveloped in hugs. Mm. We were thanked so much for the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And we would just say, we shop. We're yeah. good at shopping. <laughs> <laughs> you all are doing the hard part. Um, but the reaction of the children to the gifts in the boxes was fascinating. Well, do you remember one in particular? that? Uh, I can tell you several. One was a little girl who opened her box and there was a real pretty dress in it. Mm -hmm. And sitting two people down from her was her cousin. And apparently her cousin said, oh, that's so pretty. The dress went back in the box, the box went to the cousin. Isn't they that something? Boxes. Isn't that something? There was another little boy who was like this. Mm -mm. And one of our uh, team members walked by and she said, is everything okay? And he said, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. There's a picture of him right there. And she said, God knows that you are grateful. You can open your box. And he said, oh, thank you, lady. Isn't that something? So, what we take for granted here. I mean, you know, yes. that's just something that, w that we would just take for granted. Uh, I we mean, do. Uh, and another story I didn't want. We just found that... Um, the children were very gracious with us. Mm -hmm. um, in a predominantly black culture, mm -hmm. for white people to come in, hand you something, and then want to look in it and go through it with you, they were very gracious to us. We found that the most important thing that went in those boxes was a picture that the family or the child that packed the box sent. And a lot of times we would see children with their box closed just clutching a note that somebody had written them 
or a picture of the person who said it. See, that's interesting. I've learned that tonight, uh, that, you know, to include a mm -hmm. picture yes. uh, of yourself or your family. I mean, I, phenomenal idea. I would have, I just have never thought of that. Well, and, and we had a group of boxes that came from a church that had included the name of their church and a picture of all the people that packed the boxes. Right. And some of the people on our team got in touch with the area team where that church is located mm. and sent pictures. You know, mm. here are the children that received some of your boxes. Oh, my. So that was wonderful. Oh, my gracious, yes, yes. And so now you've been doing it. How long have you been involved with Operation Christmas Child? Well, I started packing boxes back in 1993 or 1994. Okay. And then five years ago, I joined the Upstate team. Mm, and that's mm. when life got really fun. Oh my goodness, so you've been with Kathy for a while? For five years. Okay, all yes. right. But though this is your first time to be with us here, correct? Um, I've been in the prayer room. Okay, before. that's right. Mm -hmm. But you've not been on set with us here no, before. Sir. I'm so glad that you are. Because I get to know where I'm getting to know everybody. <laughs> and you know, because we get to do this again next year. And, and uh, because Christmas will be here and gone, and we'll be getting ready again for the Christmas 2020. We sure will. You know, uh, when, when you think about uh, all that goes on, the importance we were touching on it in our, in our conversations mm -hmm. with others. The importance of prayer yes. for the local church. I'm on, let's, let's use the local church, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we stress that? Why? I know the answer, but, 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 but why is prayer so important? Uh, because this is, uh, well, we're putting gifts and things. God bless them. Amen. Why is prayer so important? Because God is the one who does it all. He is the one who magnificently arranges what goes in the box that lands in the hands of the child who needed the things in that box. Mm. We have heard so many stories of children who get shoes that are just the right size. Mm. Mm. Or their mm. family couldn't go to school because they didn't have pencils and mm. they get a box with a lot of pencils. Mm. And sometimes it's something like that that causes a non-believer to say, if somebody could hear that <laughs> cry from my heart, there has to be a God. Yeah. Tell me more about yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. And when when you were when you were there in uh, uh, South uh, Africa, uh, were were you able to meet folks maybe who had become believers because of the reception of boxes? We did, um, but we also uh, we were at one distribution where the person who had the community building where we mm -hmm. were was Hindu wow. and he stayed for the whole presentation so he got to hear the gospel proclaimed. My, my. He got to see the joy for the children who received the boxes. My, my. So and to see these little children five years old who could tell you all about what it means to be a Christian yes. and so excited. Mm, and to know and to know that you had a part you have a part. The churches, the organizations right. have a part That's right. in sharing the gospel. You know, one thing that I have enjoyed about being involved with Operation Christmas Child, and especially as a member of the prayer team, mm -hmm. is that this ministry is bathed in prayer. Mm -hmm. Franklin Graham established it that way. Yes. They don't make a move unless there's a lot of prayer behind it. Right. And so I... I commend you folks. Keep on keeping on, Judy. I, it is a joy. And to hear someone who experienced the Christmas in July, <laughs> I mean, and, and she did, uh, you will be able to experience that for every box you pack, every mm -hmm. box you ship, every box you send. And many of you have called in tonight. And in just a moment, we're going to be going to the hard break. But I want you to know that we're going to pray collectively for these prayer concerns that have come in tonight. You'll be prayed for individually tomorrow, but we're going to pray right now. So many have called in uh, needing so many needs, their financial needs, spiritual needs, uh, f uh, physical needs, emotional needs. Right now, I'm going to you just join me. Put hands, join hands. And I'm just going to offer this prayer. Father in heaven, as Judy and I come into agreement, we pray. Thy will be done. You know every need that is on these pages. You know the people. You've numbered the hair on their head, the freckles on their face. You know their house number, social security number. You know it all. So, Father, we bring them to you and we leave them at your feet. Thy will be done through the great needs they have is our prayer in Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. 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 Thank you for being part of this hour of night. Have you enjoyed it? Have you learned? Woo! I have learned a lot. And I am so grateful. Don't go anywhere. We've got so much more on the other side. We're coming up on the hard break. Take just a moment. If you need to get your glass of water, get whatever you need. And I'll be right here. I'm looking for you on the other side, okay? So please, come back and join us. I'm Pastor Benny. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Bye-bye.